So in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at a couple of ways that you can set up Tailwind in your React projects. Whether you're using a custom Webpack config or whether you're using Create React app, I'm going to show you how you can actually get Tailwind set up and working within your apps quickly and easily. So let's take a look at how you can set up Tailwind within your React apps. Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to look at two different ways that you can implement Tailwind within a React app. The first will be if you have a custom Webpack setup. So you're bundling your React app on your own and you're not using Create React app. And the second way will be to use Tailwind using the Create React app tool. So depending on how your React app is set up, if you want to skip to the relevant section in the description below, feel free to do that. And we'll get started on customizing Webpack to use Tailwind in just a second. But if you don't know what Tailwind is, I'll just give you a brief overview now. So Tailwind is a CSS framework or library, if you will, where you don't actually write any CSS at all. You actually just use built-in classes directly within your HTML markup or JSX code, if it's a React app, to style the elements on your page. So you can see here on the HTML that's on this page, there are several different classes that make up the content that we see on the right hand side. And if we want to change anything in there, we can just simply go in and adjust the classes. And as long as it's something that Tailwind understands, those CSS rules will be picked up and applied to the document. As you can see here, I've just changed the text to blue and I can change the size of the text just by giving it a different class here. So this isn't a tutorial about Tailwind, but just to give you a quick overview if you've never come across it before and how you might use it in your apps. So let's take a look at setting up Tailwind within a custom React app using its Webpack config. So here I've just got a really simple React app that's been compiled using the Webpack config over here. And in fact, we did this in a previous tutorial on how to get set up with a custom Webpack config to serve a React app. So if I just serve this for you now, just so you can see the app running, and it'll be on HTTP localhost 3010. So there's nothing really in the app, but you can see that the HTML that's being produced is unstyled. So we're going to add Tailwind to this project and add a little bit of styling to it. Okay, so back over in VS Code, we're going to go back to the terminal and install a few dependencies. So the things that we need to add to our project are Tailwind. And we're going to be using the auto prefixer package as well to do all the auto prefixing for our CSS classes. And the other main thing that we need to have is post CSS, which is going to be used to apply the Tailwind rules for us. And in our Webpack, we're going to be using the post CSS loader to apply those changes. So let's install those now. And with those dependencies installed, we'll then initialize Tailwind. And we can do that with an npx command. So npx tailwind CSS init. And you can see all that's done for us there is created a tailwind.config file, which allows us to configure and theme the Tailwind package. And we don't need to do too much in here to get set up, but we will come back in a second just to look at the purge option to remove any unused Tailwind classes from our final output. Okay, so with the Tailwind config package created, we need to create another file here, and that is for post CSS. So we'll create a post CSS.config.js. And in here, we're going to get a reference to the Tailwind CSS package by requiring it. And then we're just going to have a default export from here, which has one property called plugins. And there are two plugins that we're going to put into here. And the first is the Tailwind CSS package that we've just imported. And we can actually pass that the tailwind.config.js file to configure Tailwind. And the other one we're going to want to import also is the auto prefixer package. So this will just configure post CSS to be able to use the Tailwind and auto prefixer packages. But we need to let Webpack know that we're using this. So we need to go over to the webpack.config.js file to make some changes. And the only thing we really need to add in here is the post CSS loader at the end of our chain when we're dealing with SCSS files. Okay, so this might look slightly different if you're not using SCSS. If you're using just CSS, for example, you might need to take out the SAS loader. But for our example, we're using SAS just in case we need to add any additional styling classes to our app. So the final thing we really need to do is just go over to our SCSS file and actually import Tailwind. And there are three packages to import. The first one is base, second is components, and the third is utilities. So if we go back and run our app again, you can see there are some changes that have happened to the app. The font has changed, for example, and the H1 title is actually smaller. So we can tell Tailwind's actually being used here now. Let's just add some more classes just to prove that. So let's make the title really large. Let's limit the overall app size to two thirds of the page and set the margin to auto. 
And then finally for the paragraph tag, let's add a box shadow to that. Also some padding. So if you look at the app again, you can see we've got our really large H1 tag and our paragraph tag with padding and box shadow. Okay, so that's all you need to do to get your React app set up that's been built with a Webpack config. There's just one last thing that you might want to do, and that is to purge any of the unused CSS that's not being used by Tailwind. And by default, what happens is when your app is built, all of the styles that are available in Tailwind are actually provided to you. And if you actually have a look at the CSS that's generated, it's quite large, it's coming in at about five megabytes, which is way too big, especially since we're only using some basic styling here at the moment. So if you remember in the tailwind.config file, there was an option to purge a new CSS. So let's go back there now and do that. So with the purge option here, we can actually specify all of the paths of files that have Tailwind classes within them. But one thing you can do is actually specify the purge system to be on. So if we say it's enabled true here now, you can make this conditional. So you could say something like environment is equal to production or something. And that will run the purge process only when it's necessary, for example, when you're building for production. But for our example, because it's only simple, we can just leave that to true and it won't take too long to go through the files that we've got. But the other thing you need to do is actually specify the content, which is basically the directories or the files that you want to check for Tailwind CSS classes. So here we've only got the one, but what we can do is we can specify all of the source files any JS files that have Tailwind classes in them, and all the other classes that aren't being used within Tailwind can be dropped. So if we save that now, and if we go back to the browser, and this time you can see main.css is 11 kilobytes instead of five megabytes. So that's a really important step to implement to make sure you're not sending a massive CSS file when you don't need to. Okay, so that is how we implement Tailwind with a Webpack config. Let's have a look at how we do it with Create React App. Okay, to get us started, let's actually create a new React App. So I'm going to use npx create react app and I'll just say create react app tailwind is the project name. And once that's installed, let's actually navigate into the folder and then open it up in Visual Studio Code. And we need to install the dependencies for tailwind before we can get started. So let's open up a new terminal inside here. Okay, so as before, we actually need to install Tailwind and PostCSS and Auto Prefixer, but actually Create React App doesn't support, at the time of this video, PostCSS version 8, so we need to install an older version with some compatibility fixes. So the command we need to run is npm install Tailwind CSS at npm at Tailwind CSS PostCSS 7 compat. So that's the Tailwind package that's compatible with PostCSS 7. And then we're going to install PostCSS version 7. And then finally, auto prefixer, and that's version 9. So let's install those now. And with those installed, we then need to set up the PostCSS config as we did in the previous version. But with Create React App, we actually need to override the configuration settings. So we need to install an additional package here called Create React App Config Overrides, or Cracko. And when we're running our actual scripts here, instead of actually saying React Script Start Build and Test, we're actually going to use Cracko, which will make sure we're going to use the config package that we're going to create in a second. Okay, so that config file is craco.config.js. And if you saw the previous example, this is going to be very similar to what we did for PostCSS. But the format here that we're going to export uh, for styles, uh, we're going to have a property called PostCSS here and then just specify those plugins and we'll require Tailwind CSS and also require the auto prefix package. Okay, so the Create React app will now be using this config and using the Tailwind and auto prefix packages to do what it needs to do to enable Tailwind for us. And with that done, we can then create our Tailwind CSS config file by using MPX Tailwind CSS init which as you can see, creates a blank tailwind.config.js file for us with all the defaults in there. And the final thing to do to get Tailwind working is just go into our CSS file here and put in some statements here to import Tailwind into our React app. And there's three that we need. Tailwind base, Tailwind components, and Tailwind utilities. So if we save that and then run our app, 
You can see we've got our React app up and running. So let's see if Tailwind is actually being used and if we can edit some of this uh, markup here. So let's go over into the app.js file and let's set the uh, text here in this paragraph tag to a different color. For example, blue and also make it larger. So if we save that, uh, Tailwind is recompiled and have a look at that. And now you can see that the uh, text is uh, a different size and also it's in a blue color. And what you want to do to finish off as well is to make sure that everything is being purged as well. So over in the tailwind.config file, uh, let's actually set purge to be enabled and the content will be anything that's inside of our source directory uh, that matches a .js file. Okay, so that's the end of this tutorial. Just a couple of different ways that you can set up Tailwind in your React apps, whether you're using Webpack or Create React App. If you get stuck or if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below. And just before you go, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and so you don't miss out on any future tutorials. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.